All right. Um, thank you, Danielle, for that. That was really inspiring. Um, OK, so I'm going to start getting down into the weeds with you and talking about algorithmic governance and political philosophy. Um, I'm going to set my timer now, so don't start it yet. OK. Um, OK, so one of the things that is part of this whole endeavor is definitely going to be using technology to support individual and collective action. That's inevitably going to require governance. Um, so I'm a political philosopher. I think about governance a lot. And I think about you know, how, can we, how can we govern effectively? How can we govern justly? Um, just to say what I mean by governance, I mean settling on um, implementing and enforcing the constitutive norms of an institution. And what we're going to see with a lot of the projects that people are talking about over the course of these few days, I imagine, is ways of using um, technology to perform governance in a way that previously was done by other systems, for example, by law. So I draw this contrast between extrinsic governance by law and intermediary governance, governance by technology. Extrinsic governance is like the way in which the sort of, you know, the, the, the shape of this building, for example, constrains certain things that are possible for us to do within it. It's, it's how uh, we govern people by setting boundaries for them. And they then kind of operate in an unmediated way within that. Um, in a phrase from John Dewey, uh, extrinsic governance is like um, the, the way the river's bank go banks govern the flow of the water. Intermediary governance actually sort of uses the tools that we use to connect and communicate with one another to shape the kinds of interactions that they then enable. This is more like thinking about the way in which the bonds of the water molecules join them together. And I think it's important to reflect from the perspective of political philosophy on the differences between these different approaches to governance at a very high level. And I think that actually political philosophy really needs to catch up in this regard. It's not something that we've thought about as a field. So let's talk about how we justify governing power and how we can then use that to sort of do a bit of compare and contrast across these two modalities. There's three basic questions that you ask. Um, I call these the, um, the what question, the how question, and the who question. Um, so the what question refers to substantive justification, like what you're actually using power to do. The how question refers to procedural legitimacy, like the ways in which you're using power. And then the who question refers to justified authority. Okay, so the question then to ask is when we're using technologies for the purposes of algorithmic governance, are we making it presumptively harder or easier to answer these different questions relative to other methodologies of governance that we might use? Uh, it's important to stress here that we're talking about affordances, right? So affordances are just sort of the ways in which different technologies and different things that are available to us kind of push or pull in different directions. They're not determinative, uh, but they are really important to take into account, especially when you're designing new systems. So just as a little snapshot of the ways in which extrinsic power and intermediary governing power kind of differ with respect to answering these three questions, think about the nature of the, the question of um, justified authority. So, who has the right to exercise power? One of the challenges that we face, one of the affordances of intermediary power, is that it enables us very easily to kind of conceal where power is operating. Who's governing? Anybody who has tried to use, like, DALI or ChatGPT to do something that the, that the um, policy folks at OpenAI don't want you to do has discovered this, right? You just sort of, somewhere in the back end, someone has introduced either a filter or a model detecting um, content that they don't want to be, be promoting. And that's then being used to govern your behavior as you use the platform. It's very easy to obscure and render invisible um, the source of authority. Procedural legitimacy is an obvious challenge when using technologies, um, often because of the ways in which they can be opaque and they can sort of operate in the background invisibly. This is something that Larry Lessig wrote about you know, in, the, in 2000 in his book on code. Um, but it's something that is even more kind of apparent now as we're using generative, generative AI tools as well. Um, you can make these sorts of, the, you can make technological governance kind of irresistible, you can make it invisible. So that's something that needs to be pushed against as well. Substantive justification, there's a background um, a sort of assumption with extrinsic, ex, with extrinsic governance where people are able to operate kind of freely just in case, uh, just until they're sort of prevented from doing so by law. Kind of in the physical world, we can do stuff until we're told that we're not to. If you're generating ways for people to interact, then the background presumption is inability. You're creating every option. This creates really interesting differences in the defaults, right? A default assumption, if you're able to just kind of do whatever, do, sort of act until you're being prevented from acting, is that you can sort of, um, the law can permit something without explicitly endorsing it, uh, favoring a certain kind of neutrality. If all you can do is sort of decide whether something is going to be enabled in the way that algorithmic governance requires, 
then the law's sort of semi-neutral option is to actually not enable it, to prohibit it. So this again changes the balance that, um, that operates between these two different ways of, of governing. Okay, so I've got 20 seconds left. Actually, I've got more of my timer. Um, if affordances are not destiny, so this is really important to know that like, identifying the ways in which intermediary governance differs from extrinsic governance is not the same as saying that you're sort of necessarily going to end up leading to sort of more authoritarian outcomes when you govern through technologies, but it is something that really needs to be addressed head on. Uh, and we need to be very careful not to be drawn into the illusion of perfectible governance, like the idea that you can solve all of these problems in advance through the technologies that we design. I want to stress that resistibility and friction are necessary for justified authority and look forward to talking with you more about how to, how to address these questions. Thank you.